Hey everybody, Rebecca here for the March budget review. I'm just gonna be honest, I feel like absolute trash today. <laughs> Honestly, for the last few days, my allergies have been killing me and I have intermittent headaches. It is just springtime in the South. My sinuses are clogged and I feel like I sound a little bit different than I usually do, but anyway, I am forcing myself to get this March budget done because basically I am ready for this month to be over. If you saw my last video about the Q1 financial goals progress updates for 2023, then I mentioned in that video that the March budget exploded and it really did. I put out a mid-month um, March budget update video like I usually do and things were okay then. I was having some expenses pop up, but you know, I felt like the budget wasn't terrible at that point. And now things have just exploded since that video. And um, some of it can't be helped, but some of it is choices that I made to spend some money. So anyway, all of that being said, if you're new here, Welcome to the channel. I'm on YouTube showing my journey to reach financial independence and retire early. And since the start of this YouTube channel, I have been sharing my monthly budgets publicly. So um, the only way to get to financial independence and retire early is to make the most efficient use of the income that you're bringing in, right? So you'll see that maybe perhaps I did not do that for March, but Anyway, that's enough intro. Let's just get into the budget before this headache gets even worse. Famous last words. Yeah. Hey Rebecca, it looks like it got awfully dark there. What happened? I'm so glad you asked. I just spent the last hour and a half or so uh, filming videos and um, I filmed the budget review. I filmed my annual budget review for the channel members as well as the fire and investing portion of the budget review for them. Went to start editing these videos and none of them had sound. So apparently with the last update um, for my MacBook, I now have to automatically pick which microphone I'm using whenever I use the screen record option. Wasn't aware of that when I started filming, so now I am literally having to redo all of the videos that I just did. So that is why we now have a beer in hand because I am over this day already. So it kind of matches the way the March budget went. So let's just take a look at everything again um, or for the first time for y'all. But yeah, okay. Starting with my net income for the month, as I always do with these budget reviews, this was a good month in that it was a three paycheck month for me. I do black those out for privacy, but I did get my three paychecks in. However, y'all can see my um, tax return was filed at the beginning of the month. I was hoping that I would get my federal and possibly state tax return back this month, but I did not. So that has come into effect as far as how well the budget balanced this month or didn't foreshadowing but yeah um, I didn't get the tax return in this month it'll just come next month hopefully and I'll uh, you know make use of it then but my fidelity credit card that I use for all of my expenses I get 2% cash back that automatically goes back into my fidelity account and that did happen this month I got 4901 there and I did get a YouTube payout this month. You have to reach a $100 threshold. I usually reach that every couple of months and get a payout. So I got $125.84 from YouTube this month. My total income, I budgeted about $8,300, which is great for me, but I only brought in a little less than $7,200, which is still a great month for me because of the three paychecks, but it was significantly less than what I was expecting. Moving down into my bills and spending section, again house payment $840 as usual utility bill I budgeted 150 came in at 13090 there so a little under budget which is nice my internet with AT&T I used it used to be like $55 now it's 6525 because the one year promotional rate is over I did call them to try to get this back down to the $55 rate 
they wouldn't do it. So as soon as I find anybody who has fiber internet around here, I am going to switch to them because 6525 is way too much for the shitty upload times that I get for these videos. It takes sometimes 12 hours to get a video uploaded and that's not even using the 4K resolution and stuff. So yeah. Anyway, moving on, phone, uh, I use Mint Mobile, so this is an annual budget item here, and I paid $264.14 for my phone service for the entire year, which is amazing. Gas for my car, I did go over in this budget item just because my husband was here from Sweden for the first couple of um, weeks out of the month, and we did some extra driving around while he was here. So I budgeted $125 like usual, but I spent $155.35 not over by much there. Next, my food and household budget. So you guys, I was actually pretty proud of myself. Um, I budget $600 a month. Y'all know this is a big goal I'm working on this year is to keep under this $600 budget. I have managed to do that every month this year, including this month. Granted, it was by just a couple dollars here, <laughs> but I did stay under that $600 threshold. This $597.74, was actually an intentional choice that I made. I got close to the end of the month here and I realized I had some space in the budget here for the food and household. So I decided to buy some whey protein powder for me in bulk to save some money in the long run. And the whey protein powder I buy, it's soy free for my thyroid issues, gluten free and artificial sweetener free for me. So it's a little expensive, but I did buy five pounds of it in bulk. It was like 120 or $30 and it'll save me some money in the long run. And I was still able to stay under the $600 a month budget. So I consider that a win. Next in the budget here, this is the thing that I am the happiest about this month. I had planned on paying back my mom the $15,000 that she let me borrow at the end of last year. I wanted to get her completely paid back by the end of this month, and I did do that. It's done. It's done, finally. So I budgeted to send her $4,200. That was the remaining amount that I owed, and I did send her the $4,200. So she is completely paid back now, thankfully. But here is where things go off the rails for the March budget. So just so y'all can see here, let's add up everything that I did not plan for ahead of time in the budget. And y'all can see like this is how things get so crazy for me. Almost $1,850 worth of unplanned for ahead of time expenses. So. Let's just break this down. Some of these could not be avoided. Some of these I should have thought to plan for ahead of time, but I didn't. So first thing, personal spending here. I didn't plan on doing any personal spending at the beginning of the month, so I did not budget my usual $170 for that. If you've been with me for a while on the channel, then you know that my goal is to not spend any more than $2,000 annually for 2023 on personal spending. That is what this number out to the side is. This is how much money I had remaining for the rest of the year at the start of March. So now I have to subtract the 635.44 from this and I have done that and I have adjusted my personal spending for months going forward for the rest of the year to reflect the extra spending that I did this month in March. And to keep this video short because I am struggling so hard, you guys. Um, Basically, $100 of the $635 was money that I spent on myself, but still, I did buy some things that qualify as personal spending this month. I will go into greater detail about what I bought when I do my Low Spend Challenge 2023 update video for March, so y'all just stay tuned for that. And I'll go into the specifics about where this $635.44 went for the personal spending, but yeah safe to say that was a huge expense that I did not budget for and just blew up this month. And really all of this stuff, I mean, I, I could have not bought any of it and been fine this month. And if I had known all of these other expenses were cropping up for the rest of the month, then I should have done that, but it is what it is. I didn't think about 
needing to get my name changed after I got married. And so all of these next four items here are just related to having my new last name. So I needed a new license, I needed a new passport, I needed to order some more checks from my bank with the new last name. So those expenses added up a little bit this month. Next after that, vitamins from Amazon. This is not personal spending because this is something that I have to have. I have some basically some health conditions that require that I take a lot of vitamins. Now, when I did my mid-month budget update, I think this number was like half. And basically, long story short, I take some thyroid supplements to try to avoid going on Synthroid for my hypothyroidism if I can possibly avoid it. The thyroid supplements I take are pretty expensive and here lately my thyroid has been going out of whack despite taking those supplements so I played around with some dosages. I wasn't sure if I was going to continue to take those or have to go on Synthroid but basically long story short I rechecked my thyroid levels with my doctor. They are starting to correct again with the new dosages that I've adjusted so I decided to keep taking my thyroid supplements. Hence, I had to make another order for more vitamins, you know, supplements essentially from Amazon. So that's why this kind of doubled since the uh, mid-month budget update. But this is just how I keep myself healthy. So yeah, 328.18 spent on some vitamin orders this month, but I should be good for a little while now, which is nice. Next after that, this is another thing I should have looked at and realized I would need to plan for. Um, I was getting close to needing an oil change for my car and I always take it to the dealership because if I ever do have issues with that car, first of all, I shouldn't because I'm always taking it to the dealership for service and I keep it serviced like it should be. But if I ever do have issues with the car, I want them to see that I have always taken it to the dealership for service. So hopefully they will fix things under warranty if anything should happen with my car. And um, I did need an oil change, forgot to budget for it ahead of time. And that was $115 at the dealership. So that is what it is. This next expense, um, $500 is a good chunk of change, and I did not expect that we were going to start the visa process quite so soon after my husband went back home to Sweden, but here we are. I am, I'm super happy that we were able to get it started before the end of the month, but I thought that I wouldn't really incur any immigration attorney expenses until April at least, but it ended up being March instead. So um, I sent $500 to the immigration attorney this month and I'll send 500 more next month in April. So this process is started. I'm really glad that it started and I hope that it goes quickly, but we'll see how that goes. And attorneys are always pricey. So next after that, salon. So because I could see that the March budget was just exploding and getting out of control here, I decided to not go to the salon and save that $80 for what that is worth. Um, <laughs> it's just a drop in the bucket really compared to the rest of these expenses, but you know, it was something I could save, so I did. So let's just go ahead and delete this out of the budget. And Actually, I'm going to delete the tax return stuff too because it did not come in this month. So yeah, we don't need that. All right, moving down into the debt section here. Um, one good thing about this month, a small highlight here. My car, uh, as of the start of the month, y'all can see, I owed $24,497.93. I always pay $555 on my car payment every month. That's a little bit more than what the minimum payments are, but I do that so I can see the balance drop by $1,000 every couple of months as far as what I owe for the car. So now that this $555 payment went through, I do owe a little less than $24,000 for my car now, which means that we can color in the next icon that I have for my debt-free color chart for my car and here we go I am less than 24k 
So every icon on the chart is worth $2,000. So I'm glad to color in another icon there. I am not aggressively paying off the car because the interest rate on it is so low. It is 1.98% and until the stock market recovers, I feel like my extra money is better served going towards investing versus paying off low interest debt aggressively. So that's why, yes, I do pay a little bit more than minimum, but I'm not really working on paying off the car aggressively right now. That could always change in the future. And the last section here is the investing and fire tracking portion of the budget. So pretty much any extra money I have left over at the end of the month goes towards this section of the budget. I do also track my employer sponsored retirement account in this section, but this section is for channel members of the fire fam only. I don't show the numbers publicly anymore. I do still share my savings rate for the month. And for March, it was 16.78%, which considering all the expenses I had, I'm not really mad about that. In fact, I think that's pretty good considering I had a lot of expenses that I didn't budget for ahead of time. Plus I had to pay my mom back that big chunk of change. So I'm not mad at the 16.78% savings rate. And if you're wondering what I include in my savings rate, this includes um, all of my pre and post tax investing as well as my principal payoff on my mortgage. I used to count the entire mortgage payment, but I decided that was kind of artificially raising the savings rate percentage every month a little too much because this house I just bought last year, most of my payment goes towards the interest and not the principal. So yeah, I've adjusted my um, savings rate calculations to reflect that. I just count the principal payoff on my mortgage now plus my pre and post tax investing. So as far as my am I financially independent yet number, no, I am not. My progress towards my FIRE number is 16.9% currently. So I still have quite a ways to go to get to my FIRE number and I have no doubt that I will get there someday and I am just hoping honestly that the market will keep struggling while I am starting to make the transition here to investing aggressively. I am actually really happy that the market is down right now just because this is a good opportune time for me to start investing more aggressively. Coming back over here though, speaking of investing, looking at the totals for the month, y'all can see here, the budget did not balance this month. So all of my bills and spending that I do during the month all goes on to my Fidelity credit card, everything I can anyway. So because I really wanted to get my mom paid back no matter what this month, and I did do that, that means I am going to carry over quite a bit of a balance here on my Fidelity credit card into the month of April, but I am going to pay that off before the interest accrues. So that's the important thing, not paying the interest on the balance that I'm carrying over. But because this is such a large number, I am afraid that I probably am not going to hit that 50% savings rate for April that I had hoped for when I set up my April budget. Also, so I will have another $500 hit for the immigration attorney next month. So that's another kind of larger expense. So yeah, April may not be the 50% savings rate that I had hoped for, but you know, going forward from there, I'm still gonna hope for the best and get that at least 50% savings rate every month when I'm not traveling to Sweden. The important thing is that my mom is finally paid back now. So literally at the end of every month, whatever amount of money I have left over is going to go to investing. So that is the goal. That covers it for the refilming of my March budget review. <laughs> Let's hope that the audio recorded this time. Um, I appreciate you guys watching if you made it all the way to the end. And while I am at it, yes, channel members, I am going to refilm this section of the budget for you. I am also going to refilm the annual budget reconciliation video for you. So check out the member section on my channel page for that. And I'll see you guys over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.